Hello. I was just glancing at this. I was trying to see if I could get a feel for it from the little opening poem. And here comes a kid. Nope. Okay. Ew. Here's one of those days that I'm sure means something, but I don't know what. 11, 11, 20. November 11th of 2020. <clears throat> Today is called, oh wait, I just have to take a minute because I want you to see that I'm wearing lipstick again and my hoop earrings because I forget how flossy they make me feel. So I wanted to wear them again today. <laughs> like it's all I've got right now, okay? My sanity is holding on by a shred. Fuchsia lipstick and hoop earrings make me happy. Okay. Sustaining wonder. In one atom are found all the elements of the earth. In one motion of the mind are found all the motions of existence. In one drop of water are found all the secrets of the endless oceans. In one aspect of you are found all the aspects of life. Very cosmic feeling. Oh, that is Khalil Gibran. I'm sure he's famous, but as humans, we are relentlessly in cycle. The mind builds a shell to protect its turtle spirit, but the shell muffles the spirit till outgrowing the shell, we devise ways to break it. We build the shell, then tear it down. We build it thinner. We tear it down. Yet only between constructions are we thoroughly touched. Only between encasements are we punctured by love. But we are not to be blamed. All of nature is conscripted to such a cycle. Trees grow moss, silver tarnishes, the mind is dulled by the growth of its conceptions, and likewise a storm removes the moss, a scratch breaks through the tarnish, a crisis reveals the raw surface of the mind. Time builds and erodes, and we are transformed, yet the same. Wind gathers sand to a dune, and tide undermines the dune. It's how the early years pack us, and the later ones softly flood us without a sound. We have no choice but to withstand the film that constantly builds, and to endure the erosion that inevitably follows. Of course, for humans, this dance of film and erosion is not merely physical. It affects our thinking, feeling, seeing, and being. How easily and repeatedly we dull and brighten. How easily we become chronic amnesiacs of spirit, drifting into observation and analysis when we stop participating and experiencing. Then we wake one day forgetting the feel of life while incredibly attuned to its silhouette. We can see it so clearly, each perplexity and nuance, yet why can't we feel it? In this way, the mind grows thoughts and words the way the planet grows trees, so much that we no longer see the heavens. And so we need to chop down what we think and say and yes silence is an axe in truth our aliveness depends on our ability to sustain wonder to lengthen the moments we are truly uncovered to be still and quiet to all the elements of the earth and all the secrets of the oceans stir the aspects of life waiting within us mm. Yep, I feel like that's kind of linked to what um, I talked about yesterday. Stirring your oceans. I would have to agree. I would have to agree. I was trying to decide if I was ready to move on to mindful moment, and I think I am. Mindful moment. Mindful moment. The next time you walk outside, let the cold air wash over your closed eyes. 
take a deep breath and let the air wash off the film of memory or thought you are struggling with. Feel your blood flush your face and open your eyes freshly. I have been thinking about, you know, in addition to making sure I'm taking my supplements and getting my diet cleaned back up again, just to get my head straight, connecting with the earth is such a big thing. And I'm not great at exercising. And so for a while there, I was going to our local community center and I was walking on the treadmill and doing that. And it just, it wasn't the same. I mean, it was nice to be inside because it was raining a lot and it's nice to have air conditioning, but it is, it's not the same. And so I'm really grateful that the, you know, the temperature is cooling down, but walking outside and just, it, you don't even have to, I mean, if you're somewhere where you can walk safely in your neighborhood or in a park, you got to do it. You got to do it. We were made to be earthlings and sharing our energy with the earth and in turn sharing her energy back. And I know that sounds fluffy and woo woo, but I'm going to tell you, I don't care what it sounds like because it's the truth. Um, if you have a patch of ground where you can take your shoes off and just touch the earth with your feet. And there is, there's also science to this. So this is not fluffy woo woo stuff. That's called earthing. And it is also very important. But the science behind it is that your flesh touching the earth, not cement, but like grass or dirt or sand, whatever, you're discharging a lot of pent up energy in your body. And it's, it's important. So I took the kids to the beach the other day and I kind of, I love the beach and I hate the beach. I hate sand in my car and all the crap that my kids, my kids don't just take a little pail and shovels to the beach. They raid my husband's shovels and five gallon buckets and they like dig some serious holes. <laughs> I always have to make them fill them up because I don't want people falling in them and getting hurt. And then they throw all that crap in the back of my car and my car is full of sand and it's just gross. But I love the beach because it's one of the places where I take my shoes off and something about that water, even though, you know, I hear a lot of complaints about how yucky the water is around here. doesn't matter. I appreciate it nonetheless. That water here is connected to all the water on the rest of the planet. And it allows me to not only discharge that stagnant energy, so for the science part, you know, but it also allows me to discharge my emotions because I end up talking to the water and I'm really, kind of blown away just like you know I was doing that Dr. Emoto challenge uh was that through September October it's kind of a massive scale doing it at the ocean um, and when I lived in Nevada I would sometimes go up to Lake Tahoe because it was just like a 30 minute drive and do it at Lake Tahoe and I'm gonna tell you I don't know what the science is behind that part of it. And I'm, I, it is a really weird thing how that works. So try it. If you don't have an ocean by you, or if you don't have Lake Tahoe by you, do you have a stream? Do you have a hose? Hose, use the dang hose, you know, cause it's going to flow. That water's going to flow into the earth. I don't know. I just know that magical things happen and I love when the magical things have some scientific validity to them. So not that I always have to have science behind stuff, but sometimes it's fun. So whatever you're doing today, whether you're watching this in the morning or whether you're watching this in your car, 
at lunchtime or if you're watching this at home. Just know that I appreciate you showing up and that I can I can definitely feel certain people's energy. And I appreciate that you're putting it out there for me to feel. And I want you to know that I love you and I think about you. It's the weirdest thing. I get little pictures in my head and I don't know. So just know this weirdo is out here sending you love and good thoughts, okay? Have an awesome day. Bye.